what is 1,000 square feet and offers up to 40 students simultaneous access to interactive, high-tech, state-of-the-art industry equipment? You're about to find out on this episode of Educationally Speaking. Welcome to Educationally Speaking, a podcast which focuses on important topics related to education that affect students, parents, teachers, and administrators. My name is Sarah Davis, the Communications Specialist for Oakland Schools and the host of this podcast. Nationwide and locally, careers in STEM, which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math, are making headlines as growing and lucrative fields for the future. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, between 2019 and 2029, STEM jobs are expected to grow by 8%, compared to 3.7% for other occupations. The Michigan STEM Partnership states that, in Michigan, 30% of all jobs in the Metro Detroit area are in research and development or STEM intensive industries and 44.2% of all Southeast job postings require some sort of STEM skill. Not only is the Michigan field ripe with opportunity for those interested in STEM occupations, but those in STEM careers make more on average than other Michigan workers. In 2013, the average wage among all occupations in Michigan was approximately $21 an hour, compared to $34 an hour for STEM jobs. One of Oakland School's number one missions is to provide all students in Oakland County with amazing career readiness opportunities. So with all that said, Oakland Schools has been working hard to over the past several months to really begin focusing on supporting the STEM efforts of local school districts. Today, we're gonna to talk to the team who has created these programs and find out what exciting learning opportunities are on the horizon, as well as talk to a local elementary school principal and a student who are eager to participate in these opportunities. Please welcome Phil Kimmel, Kyle Kilpatrick, and Lauren Marshalletta, all STEM consultants for Oakland Schools. Jeff Brown, principal of Oxford Elementary School and Oxford Community Schools, and Cody Musel, a freshman student in Oxford this year. Let's begin by talking about STEM in Oakland County and why Oakland schools decided we needed to provide more support to local districts in this realm. Phil, first, thank you for being on the show. Can you start us off by talking a little bit about the history here? Yeah, thank you very much for having me on the show. I uh, just wanted to start off by saying, yes, you mentioned that uh, the three of us are STEM consultants at Oakland schools and we work within the career readiness department. So really focusing on how do we make sure that we are thinking about all those careers that you mentioned early on, Sarah, and, and, and focusing on how we make students career ready. So uh, the first thing I'd like to say is we believe strongly that STEM is career readiness. So if you look at what STEM principles are uh, and, and following processes and, and making uh, students think about problem solving and, and really getting down to that, uh, that, that rigorous mindset of, of, of perseverance and getting through problems. I think those are all skills and strategies that, that students need to go out into the, into the world and, and be effective uh, uh, members of, success, of society. So I think that is part of being career ready, or being career ready, sorry. And then when you kind of talked about the history, uh, we started, uh, we came on board as STEM consultants uh, almost three years ago, not quite, but uh, just over two and a half years ago. And we recognize that uh, the, the big thing within Oakland County is that all, STEM, or all students need STEM, right? Uh, it might not be a student that's going to go into a, a STEM career, but it's um, all students, even, even those who are going to, to go out and become uh, uh, writers, or uh, maybe they're going to work in another industry or field, they can still utilize those skills. And so I think uh, the three of us as STEM consultants and then OS, uh, Oakland Schools as a whole, really think that STEM is something that Oakland County needs, uh, and we, we are really trying to help facilitate that. So we're doing that in a couple of different ways. Uh, obviously, we're going to talk about them today, but we really want to make sure that we are uh, putting boots on the ground. It might, it might be in a, in a teacher's classroom, or it might be working with uh, curriculum directors at a school district to, to find out what uh, pathways they want to implement. 
uh, at their schools. So we're really, we're really trying to uh, meet teachers, educators, administrators, and districts wherever they're at, and really trying to set up uh, a focus on STEM education as a whole throughout their district. So I think that uh, kind of covers where, where the history is and where we're going. Yep. Yep, thanks for that explanation, Phil. So the STEM experience that Oakland Schools is offering to our local districts is basically three-pronged. And although each part of this experience is important, I think it's fair to say that one of the more eye-catching aspects of it is our STEM eye. Kyle, thank you for coming on the podcast today. Can you explain what exactly the STEM eye is? Uh, thanks. Uh, Sarah, for having me, excited to share uh, all the work we have going on in Oakland County related to STEM um, and with everyone listening. Uh, so the STEMI is truly a STEM semi, hence the name STEMI. For scope, it is the largest trailer you see on the road. It's 53 feet in length. That doesn't require like a leading and following truck. So it is very large. Um, when it expands, both sides expand out to a thousand square feet approximately of usable instructional space. Um, and so that allows us to have somewhere between approximately 30 learners uh, on there at a time uh, to explore and interact with the stations that are on the uh, STEM mobile lab. We have a space in there for about eight interactions, and I know we'll get into some more details on those, but as we were designing and developing this, we were really intentional about making it a space that's adjustable and can grow and continue to meet the needs of the county over the next five years because it is a five-year long program. It's just completed uh, its build in May. Uh, it was a six to nine month build process. It's actually built from scratch. So from it doesn't exist, a fully custom build um, for this project uh, because of all the technology inside of it. To be driven, it's quite a process, right? So uh, Phil and I have mentioned this before that it's the most difficult engineering process him and I have been a part of. So there's a lot going on from the sides need to expand and collapse. You need to pack things so it can be stored. So it is pulled by a tractor, um, but there's a several hour takedown and setup time. So there's a lot of moving parts that go into making this a functional thing that we can bring to all 28 districts in Oakland County. Um, and so we are excited that we have this great space as a platform. And as you mentioned earlier, um, it's definitely catchy and it is truly starting to spark conversations about STEM across the county. Absolutely, I can't wait till we uh, are able to display it to everyone in the county. So Lauren is here. She is the, the third team member of, of our STEM team here at Oakland Schools. Thanks for being on the show. What are some examples of what students may expect to encounter when in the STEM I? Yeah, thank you so much for having me, Sarah. Um, so kind of a high level overview, we ultimately have four different experiences um, based on different industries throughout the STEM I. And um, to kind of go over those, we have a mixed reality experience, we have a self-driving car experience, uh, collaborative robots, and a smart manufacturing experience. And each of these experiences include um, industry level tools and experiences that we really hope will uh, spark engagement with our students. And this is what we have currently right now, but we do plan to update these experiences and what's available based on current industry trends and district needs. So at each of these experiences, they have some really cool technologies and tools but ultimately, kind of like Kyle mentioned, we want to spark a conversation with our students and we want them to be able to see themselves as successful in these industries. We want them to be able to understand that in order to work maybe on self-driving cars, um, they don't just have to be an engineer and there are so many other ways that they can be involved in these industries. Um, and on top of that, we want this STEM engagement and spark to last long before the STEM I comes to town and long after the STEM I comes. Absolutely. Thanks for that, Lauren. And Jeff, you are here to, to sort of offer the district point of view on the STEM I. You said you've had the oppor opportunity to see the STEM I. What are some of your thoughts on it? Um, hi, Sarah. Thank you for the opportunity to talk about some of the fun and engaging learning that's happening in Oxford and with the STEM I. Um, I wanted to take a quick second and thank Phil, Kyle, and Lauren. They've been really easy to work with and it's been fantastic. And I wanted to give Cody just a quick plug because I texted his principal a couple weeks ago and just asked for a name of a student who would do a good job. And she texted me back within 10 seconds with Cody's name and said that he would be the perfect kid to do it. So I just wanted to make sure I thanked all of the appropriate people. Uh, I had the opportunity in May to visit the STEMI. I don't think I had an accurate picture in my head of what I was gonna be walking into, 
Um, two seconds into opening the door, my first impression was just wow. Um, I saw engaged students at several stations spread throughout the STEMI. Uh, you could see the smiles on their faces even through the masks that people were wearing. Uh, the intent of the initial visit was just to amaze kids and I think the STEMI truly lived up and delivered that. Um, in Oxford, our plan is to have fifth and eighth graders visit the STEMI this year. One of the main purposes is to get the kids in those transition years excited about moving on to the next level and some of the new opportunities that are going to be there. And I think one of our other goals is to get teachers thinking just about the world that our students are headed into and to think about um, how their teaching is going to be impacted by that moving forward. All right. Thanks, Jeff. And uh, Cody is next. Cody, thanks for being on the show. You told me you were given the opportunity to go on the STEMI when it uh, visited Oxford Middle School last year. Can you talk about what your thoughts were when you first stepped onto the STEMI and what some of your favorite items were? Um, my initial thoughts when I first got onto the STEMI was it was a lot bigger than I was expecting because there was a construction semi in the parking lot a couple days earlier and I, Ms. Beasley and I were both thinking that that was the STEMI. So when we got on there, we were shocked by how huge it was. It was really modern inside, which also surprised me. And it was really quite cool. My favorite part was the light guide manufacturing system. I thought that was really cool how a computer could recognize different blocks and tell you where to place them. So it was less strain on the person that would probably have to do that repetitively. So I thought that was really innovative. I also quite enjoyed the hollow lenses. That's really cool. I've heard a lot about them. Never got to use one until then. And the autonomous car part was cool too. So. Very cool. That's great. We like to hear, you know, that's, that's the point of this demo is that our students can experience these different kinds of things and really enjoy them. Uh, do you have any special interest in STEM? Um, yes, I want to be an aerospace engineer when I'm older. So I always wanted to work with something involving combustion and engineering. And at first I wanted my dad's an automotive engineer. I wanted to work on that, but cars are going electric and I don't really take interest in electric cars. So then I wanted to work on planes and now planes are starting to go electric. So I don't really want to work on planes. So, and I've always taken an interest in rockets. I've been going to space camp since I was like eight or something. Always been super fascinated with rockets. So that's what I want to go into. Sounds like a great uh, career choice. I'm sure you're going to do really, really well at that. Um, and I'm glad that the STEMI was a positive experience for you too. Now, some of you may have already heard of the STEMI because we've been promoting it like crazy. But as I mentioned earlier, the STEMI is just one part of a three-pronged approach Oakland Schools has to supporting local districts with STEMI initiatives. And just as important of a piece to that pie is our STEMCO checkout system. Lauren, can you talk about the checkout system? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the STEMCO checkout system um, has a series of different options for teachers to choose from, um, teachers from across Oakland County. They are kind of uh, separated into similar sections that uh, the STEMI experiences are. And I would say that was a pretty intentional choice because like we had mentioned before, when the STEMI leaves um, or before the STEMI comes, we really want students and teachers to still be able to take advantage of that engagement with STEM and the spark with STEM. So um, we have robots K-5 uh, opportunities for um, students and teachers to check out. We have robot 612, we have electronic building blocks, interactive media and advanced manufacturing. Um, and within each of those categories are different uh, tools and technologies that our teachers can check out. And when they're interested in checking them out currently, they can email uh, myself, Phil and Kyle um, and typically uh, we see that teachers check them out from between two to three weeks if they need them for longer. Um, that's certainly something we can discuss as well. And we don't necessarily want to just hand tools over to teachers and say, here, you figure it out. So part of the deal with the STEM Co is determining what level of support our teachers need. If they're very comfortable with it, absolutely take it and run with it. But if they are needing some support um, and trying to figure out where it might fit into some things that they're already doing. If they're just kind of wanting to get their feet wet, we can provide all of those levels of support as well. 
what a great program. And Phil, why did Oakland schools feel that the STEM checkout was necessary? Yeah, that's a great, uh, great question there, Sarah. I, I think like Lauren mentioned, uh, the STEM I is, is great, but it's also what we do before students come on the STEM I and what we do after students come on the STEM I. Uh, we, we really are focusing on, um, you know, promoting career readiness and, and if they have that that hour long or so experience on the STEM I, it's great, but we, we need to do something else to, to help maximize that impact, right? And so uh, what we're really trying to do with the STEM checkout is, is provide that, that opportunity and also break down some barriers. I think the, the fact that all districts have access to the STEM equipment makes it nice that um, we can kind of share the load a little bit, um, both financially and also from a uh, just a support uh, point of view. Uh, so I know from classroom experience there that uh, a lot of times I would use some type of STEM technology and uh, I might use it for a, a unit or um, you know a couple of weeks here and there and then it would go back on the shelf and uh, I, I might not touch it again until the next year, right? So not a very cost effective model. In this, we're, we're loaning out and, and we're meeting districts uh, during their usage times and, and when they would hope to uh, utilize it, maybe it's for a unit and then they can get it back and, and have it basically utilized throughout the entire year. The other thing we're trying to do, like I said, is break down some barriers. We know that the, the limitations to STEM education often come in the form of resources. So we're providing those. Also comes in the um, uh, a barrier would be the support or uh, I guess tools or, or resources. There we go. The resources that were, would be needed. Uh, to help support that. So uh, we're tr trying to come up with uh, lesson plans and really connect educators together to make sure that they are collaborating and, and really getting the, the most out of that. And then I think the biggest, uh, another big factor would be also technology and devices. So any of the STEM equipment that we check out or loan to people uh, also come with uh, a device, whether that be a, a laptop or an iPad, whatever that might be, so that way we can really, really work with the district and, and, and give them the full opportunity to, to experience that uh, even if they don't have, they might not have the, the device or the app or the software, we can help provide that. So I think the biggest part there is, is making sure that we are providing a, an all-encompassing experience uh, that really moves the needle beyond the STEM I and really, like I said, maximizes that STEM impact across their districts. All right, and Jeff, you, you've checked out items from the, the STEM checkout, correct? We have. Um, a couple years ago, Phil and Kyle came to a half-day PD in Oxford and shared the inventory. They brought samples and they really engaged teachers. I think teachers were just truly amazed and excited by what all the offerings were. To build off of that excitement, we de developed a plan to introduce it to our students. Luckily, my building had an empty classroom we outfitted the room with wall-to-wall -wall colored glass whiteboards. For seating, we ordered stools and light plastic tables that we could easily move out of the way just to really create a, a fun and flexible group and STEM type room. It was really important for us right from the beginning that kids would see STEM as fun right from the start. As we move forward with COVID, of course, uh, that room didn't get to be used very much last year but we were still committed and followed through and had lots of materials from the STEM Co come to the building. Uh, kids used both co-spaces and Bloxels, which are both drag and drop um, type programs where kids are building virtual worlds. We took on the laser wood cutter for one of the rotations that we tried last year. So the kids got to experience the software where they had to create their design and then they all had the opportunity to actually watch it be cut um, right there on the wood in front of them, which was incredibly fun. We also took on the, an extra piece of trying to line up a career speaker to go with each of those experiences. So the goal was for kids to be able to see the practical application of the tools that they were learning to use. We were lucky enough to have one of the people who actually works for Bloxels come and talk about his job through Zoom. Uh, we also talked to a gentleman who used augmented reality as part of his job. And so it, it was fun for kids to see the practical use of the technology and how it would be used in their professional career. Our fourth grade teachers checked out the little bits um, to use with their electricity unit. We've been doing electricity units for quite a long time, 
but the technology that we checked out through open schools worked better. It was easier for the kids to use. It really did add to um, their experience with learning about electricity. Uh, Phil and Kyle were amazing and met with selected groups of kids through Zoom and gave them additional opportunity to further explore co-spaces and Bloxels to become kind of our local experts. I'm really lucky in this building to have a computer te technician that used to code in her previous life and a media paraprofessional that loves technology and is very involved with Oxford Robotics. Um, both of them helped me deliver the lessons in the classroom. For this year, I'm really excited to bring some new items in, um, including green screens and drones, because who doesn't want to see drones flying around our building in May at the end of the year when everybody's getting a little bit squirrely. And our goal still for this year is really fun. And our long-term goal is for teachers to be able to see these materials and figure out how they're going to put them and make them a long-term part of their curriculum. But this year, as we're still launching it, we just want to have fun for the teachers and for the kids. Yeah, but I mean, it sounds like Oxford has a really uh, well-developed STEM plan there to, to really bring STEM to the students and teachers. So, so good job over there. What was the student feedback when you brought these different interactions into the school? I think the students really have had a blast from day one. And I think I can sum it up in just a few experiences. Uh, because of COVID, I think we sort of monopolized the licenses for uh, co-spaces and Bloxels this year through Oakland schools. And so what was interesting is as the year went on and I kept walking into classes, I would notice if kids had any free time that they were still using both of those software platforms. Uh, kids were just super excited to share anytime they saw me coming in. Um, my favorite story was in one of the classes that we went into, there was a student that I said, hey, we're gonna learn to make video games today. This is gonna be really fun. And the look on her face just didn't look like it was going to be fun. And the moment that just sort of made me the most proud of the, how this went for this year was at the end of the year, she called me over one day when I was walking in her classroom and wanted to share the world that she'd made. And she'd really gotten into the art and creation aspect of what her world looked like. And so for a kid who I don't think was jumping up and down at STEM, she was excited as anybody of what it was going to look like. And, you know, as we're moving into this year, our fifth graders do an exhibition project at the end of each, at the end of their fifth grade experience. And one of our dreams would be to see the kids integrating some of these STEM technologies into those presentations. I think it would really make them just robust and fun and exciting. And so some of the things like using the green screens would be spectacular. Getting a kid to design their presentation around a co-spaces world, I think would be amazing. And kids just gravitate to it. They smile, they take it home, they experiment. They use the licenses at night because they had 24 seven access to them. Um, kids just jumped right in. And that's the whole goal of the STEM experience for Oakland schools is to provide those opportunities, to provide that career readiness. So. Uh, it's great to hear from a district like Oxford that, that it, it worked as it's supposed to. A final piece of the STEM experience puzzle is our involvement with the Oakland County Competitive Robotics Association, otherwise known as ACRA. Bill, can you discuss how the STEM experience connects with ACRA? Yeah, for sure. And, and just uh, before I get into that, I, I do want to just uh, uh, echo my thoughts uh, uh, that, that Jeff said about um, a great working relationship. I think that is a big part of building a successful STEM community, right? So as we look at building that ecosystem, uh, having having educators who are willing to, you know, take some things on and and really, um, you know, not 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 challenge the the educators to 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 say you have to implement this, but really that that. Um, when Jeff mentioned playing, I think that is the, the, the key to a su successful rollout uh, of, a, of a STEM curriculum, right? Uh, seeing that there's some value in just, let, let's, let's play with this stuff. Let's see where it takes us. Um, maybe you're going to uh, work with a student that really wants to be the next engineer. Maybe you're going to work with a student that wants to be uh, involved in aerospace like Cody, right? So, uh, but maybe you're, you're interested with a student that really wants to take a piece of technology and use it in some other way that we've never seen before, right? So maybe they want to take that uh, that video game design 
uh, that Jeff was mentioning and, and start looking at how I can do more art with it and or maybe how I could do virtual art uh, where we're getting into a headset and people can look at it virtually, right? So to, finding that next entrepreneur is just as important to finding that next engineer. So yeah, your question was more about okra, um, but I ha had to make sure that we, we highlight the, the, the success, success stories as well. So uh, okra is definitely a, an awesome opportunity for, for students. Uh, it is, uh, stands for Oakland County Competitive Robotics Association, like we mentioned. And uh, what we can do there is in the fall every year, high school students get an opportunity to uh, build and compete with a, a robot that they design. And uh, what I like about this one is that Okra has to be completely 100% student designed and built. So they must, uh, they, they, can, they can meet and interact with some mentors that can provide some advice up to an hour per week. But beyond that, it is uh, the student's uh, design and build process that, that shines through and you really get to see some, some creative solutions. The students get to uh, compete over basically a five competition season uh, and we keep scores throughout the entire year and I also like that there are there's components uh, to it for other awards other than just performance on the field there there's there are coding awards there are um, awards for creativity there's a, an aesthetic uh, presentation and then there's also uh, awards for um, you know things that that you maybe do as a team out side of the the okra or robotics uh, playing field so wh what have you done within your community how have you spread uh, robotics to um, more more students within your district uh, than than are just on the team themselves so I think okra really uh, is a positive outlet for students and and also it's a way for them to be involved in some open-ended problem solving I think that's key as well so a really great opportunity for students to participate in. Wonderful. So that is the Oakland School STEM experience in a nutshell. Kyle, where can those interested in participating in any part of this get more information? Sure. So as Phil mentioned earlier, we, uh, the STEM consultants, Phil, Lauren, and I all sit under the career readiness team at Oakland School. So you can definitely start there at the website and view not just STEM offerings and support, but additionally, the connected career readiness opportunities we have uh, for learners in Oakland County. I also think it's really important to say that we are available and through email to contact any of us for support. Um, you know, as an example, the, the great things that Jeff has done in Oxford started with a conversation with us, right, just by reaching out. Um, and we enjoy that. And we, we think that that's really the important part of our work. The STEM I is amazing. Uh, it's a great spark to start those conversations, STEMCO, ultimately to follow up and support that. But really, our work is to support our 28 districts with unique challenges in a way that meets their needs. Um, in a meaningful way. And so certainly start with the website, but ultimately we are available by email to have and begin those conversations uh, to support in all things STEM and career readiness. All right, great. And all that information will be in our show notes for our listeners to connect with the STEM experience if they so desire. Thank you again to all of you for being on the show, Phil, Kyle, and Lauren. I hope that the STEM experience continues to be successful. Jeff, we appreciate Oxford's support of our program and good luck to you this school year. Same to you, Cody, and best of luck in your future studies. I think we can all tell you have a bright future ahead. Jeff and Cody, keep us updated on how the STEM learning is going there in Oxford. Maybe we can do a follow-up podcast to all of this. This podcast was brought to you by Oakland Schools Intermediate School Districts Communication Services and is produced by Media Production and Distance Learning Manager Mark Hansen. Oakland Schools is a regional service agency in Oakland County, Michigan, that offers support services to school personnel, which are better delivered regionally and provide cost, size, and quality advantages to those we serve. I have been your host for this podcast, Sarah Davis, and you can find this and future episodes of Educationally Speaking on our Oakland Schools website at oakland.k12.mi.us and Anchor FM. We hope you will join us for our next episode where we will continue to bring you topics that affect every student every day.